A Quiet Place is a chilling but riveting film that delivers a fresh twist on the horror genre. yippee ki movie lovers, it's Jan here, and today I'm breaking down the ending to A Quiet Place, plus explaining some details you probably didn't know about the creatures in the movie. If this is your first time here, I do regular movie breakdowns, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more. Spoiler warning, I'll be discussing the whole movie, so take care if you've not seen it yet. A Quiet Place is set in a near future in which an alien invasion has decimated swathes of the human population around the world. The creatures have super sensitive hearing, and so survivors like the Abbots live as quietly as possible. This is why John Krasinski's character Lee puts down sand trails to muffle sounds while walking, and everyday life has been completely adapted to dampen any sound. The monsters are blind, so visual signals are an important way for the human characters to communicate, and because the family have a deaf daughter, they have been able to use the American Sign Language they learned with her to talk silently with each other. Ok, let's take a look at the alien creatures and why they attack anything making a sound. Design-wise, the aliens are rather interesting. They're different from, but do bring to mind, other creatures like the Demogorgon in Stranger Things, the Xenomorph in the Alien movies, the monster in Cloverfield, and the crazy sharp teeth you see with Venom. The film's production designer Jeffrey Beecroft has said that he took inspiration for the alien's form from a Nautilus shell. The Nautilus is a type of sea creature that has very poor eyesight, although A Quiet Place dials that up, making the aliens completely blind. By the way, there are various newspaper clippings which describe the aliens as either angels of death or death angels, which is interesting because in the Jewish tradition, the archangel Samael is known as the angel of death and is sometimes referred to as a blind god as well. And the aliens really do seem to be the bringers of death, but Lee has been researching them extensively and on his whiteboard we can see the main things he knows about them. One thing he's still trying to figure out is the answer to the question, why don't they, and I think that says, eat their kill. Although the movie doesn't seem to touch on this in an obvious manner, production designer Jeffrey Beecroft has explained that, when loud sound vibrates within the alien's body, it's intensely painful and they will destroy anything that makes noise. And we do see them pulsating and thrashing around when they're faced with a big sound. Which means the real reason why the creatures attack anything making a loud noise isn't for sport or for food. Instead, it seems like they're trying to eliminate loud sounds in the environment around them. And of course, as the family eventually discovers, although the aliens' hypersensitivity to sound makes them deadly to life on Earth, it's actually their weakness as well. And that makes Lee's efforts to develop a working hearing aid for his daughter Regan, played by Millicent Simmons, the key to the story. The new hearing aid he gives her doesn't work properly and creates a high-pitched sound that is not only uncomfortable to her, but is also unbearable to the creatures when they're nearby. It seems likely that because the aliens are blind, they rely on a sort of echolocation or biosonar to emit sound waves that they can track to navigate and hunt. These sound waves create audio feedback when they hit the amplifiers in Regan's hearing aid. And because of the creature's audio hypersensitivity, the amplified feedback sound ends up being extremely painful for the aliens. Now, when you watch the movie, you may have been hoping that Regan knew this when she and her brother were hiding in the car, as it could have saved their father. But at that moment, she didn't understand that the hearing aid's audio feedback was affecting the aliens. When it happened earlier, the alien was behind her in the cornfield, and although we could hear the creature rustling, because Regan is deaf, she had no idea it was behind her. And when Regan and her brother were in the silo, although she also felt the feedback, she didn't realise that was the reason the creature ran off. It's not until Regan is in the basement with her mother and they're confronted with an alien that suddenly goes into an uncontrollable spasm that Regan understands her hearing aid has uncovered the monster's weakness. But the feedback doesn't kill the creature and it comes back at them. However, its head is exposed as it opens up, so Evelyn kills it with a shotgun blast to the face. This leads us to the very final moment of the movie where Evelyn and Regan realise what they have to do. As the remaining aliens come running to the farmhouse attracted by the noise of the gun, Regan and Evelyn have the hearing aid, speaker and shotgun at the ready. According to Lee's whiteboard, there should be two creatures left in the area, so it should be possible for them to take both of them out. The wider world might also recover if the discovery can be relayed to others, so that sound-based weapons can be developed to take down the alien invasion. By the way, the idea of being pregnant during this apocalyptic time is interesting both in terms of the plot and for what it symbolises. Obviously, it creates a huge problem as not only is giving birth in total silence impossible, but a newborn baby will also naturally cry out. 
To cope with this, the family builds a special basement area with a box for the baby complete with an oxygen tank. The underground room is covered with a mattress which seems to muffle sounds coming from below, enough to keep any creatures from detecting them. The birth was actually supposed to take place in this room, but of course Evelyn was forced to give birth in the bathroom while she was hiding from the alien invading the house. Symbolically, Evelyn's pregnancy and birth signals hope for their family and the future of the world. And you can also see this in the fact that, despite their terrible situation, Evelyn tries to move forward by homeschooling her children, and both parents try to maintain their spirits with family dinners and board games. This indicates that the Abbott family is trying to thrive, not just survive, during this nightmarish time. By the way, the scene where Evelyn is in the flooded basement with the baby is an interesting callback to earlier in the film where Lee showed his son Marcus how the sound of the waterfall would mask noises they made. The sound of the water in the flooding basement muffled some of the sound of the whimpering baby. But Evelyn took herself and the baby behind a sheet of falling water as the baby started to cry, and just like the waterfall, the noise of the falling water was enough to drown out the baby's crying. So did you enjoy A Quiet Place and what did you think about the creatures? Also would you like to see follow-up stories set in this universe along the lines of say the Cloverfield movies? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and you can also tweet me at Jan underscore Gilbert or at Flick City. If you enjoyed this I really appreciate you hitting that like button and sharing the video. Plus you can check out more of my breakdowns and horror movie videos by tapping the screen right here. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee ki movie lovers.